Howdy y'all, it's your favorite trainer with a belt buckle, helping you pass the NASM CPT 2023. We've helped thousands of people pass this with our guide. We also have live calls every Tuesday and Thursday with Megan and I. Asking questions is going to help calm your nerves. But some of you, maybe you failed, you have testing anxiety, you just want a little bit more. That's what private tutoring is for. So we have 30 minute and 60 minute calls. You get access to us and we're going to quiz you just like the test would. So for example, your client's doing overhead squat assessment. What's overactive? We're going to give you four answers. You need to be able to get it like that. And then we're going to go right into a nutrition question. Which the following is a fat soluble vitamin. And then we go back to the overhead squat and which muscle would we want to foam roll? You got to foam roll or you're going to die. Don't that's stupid. But hey, you don't care about that. You want to pass this test because you can't get a refund. Once you do pass it, send me some whiskey and I'll help you actually become a qualified trainer. That's why I wrote the book, How to Become a Successful Personal Trainer. The average textbook trainer quits within a year. Not when you show up. We'll get you hired wherever you want to go. Build a business. We have classes that are live. They're on demand. Put into our app. You get access to fitness professionals. You get asked, Chris, how do I design a program for someone who has thoracic outlet syndrome? We just designed a program for someone who asked that question the other day. We have trainers at Equinox that will help you become successful there, get hired. Our goal is to change the landscape of the fitness industry by creating qualified personal trainers. And that's exactly what you are when you show up. Have a great day, y'all. Let us know what you think of this video. Belt buckle trainer, check it out. The glutes are always going to be underactive the vmo will always be underactive i'll show you where these are so when we take a look at the most important thing to really memorize from the guide i would say just this chart right here and so knowing where these are in the body and so they don't correspond right to left they are just think of it as the left side is what's called overactive and what we do to overactive muscles they're also shortened uh -huh. And so what that means is we need a FOMO. We always got a FOMO. You know how long we FOMO uh -huh. for? Why we foam roll? How long? Uh, how long we foam roll for? Uh, I couldn't tell you, man, honestly. Yep. 20 to 40 seconds. Yep. So, 20 to 40 seconds. Yep. That's we, those are questions you'll definitely see. You need to know that we always foam roll for 20 to 40 seconds. Now, if you're in the beginning of the OPT model, which is stabilization, we will then do a static stretch next for the same amount of time, 20 to 40 seconds. So the muscles on the left, you know where the gastrocnemius is? Yeah, we're getting some, we're getting some lag, aren't we? Oh. Here we go. Can you hear me? Yeah, I saw you pause for a second, but are you good now? Yeah, I'm good now. Okay, but, so um, do you know where the gastrocnemius is? Yeah, I know where that's at on the study guide. I have, I have, um, I have um, flashcards for that information. Okay. So where's the gastrocnemius? Gastrocnemius. I don't know if it's your... Huh? Yeah. Good now? I'm losing yeah, you. Yeah, I'm good. Do you hear me? Yeah. Pause for a second there. All right. So do you know where the gastrocnemius is? Uh, it's across from the anterior tibialis, I'm guessing. Is nope, that? Nope. So don't. No? So don't. Okay. Don't pair so them I up don't like know. That. Yeah. So don't pair them up like that. So just look at the left side. Yeah. That's it. So All right. let's, let's go and take a look at um, anatomy. So the main muscles that we need to know <clears throat> So I feel like that would help the most is knowing where all the muscles are. Yep. Okay, so let's take a look at So here's an anatomy chart. Can you see this? Okay, yeah. So the gastrocnemius and the soleus, they are lower body, posterior calf muscles. So the gastrocnemius mm -hmm. is your calf. Yeah. And then below it or underneath it is your soleus. 
And so when you look at your, if you see my calf here, that right there, oh. that's the gas truck. Okay. This is the soleus. Got it. it. Together, oh. they go into your Achilles tendon and into your heel bone, which is called your calcaneus. They're not going to ask you on anything except these overactive and underactive ones. So the anterior and posterior tip, those are underactive right here on the front side. The, those are tibialis, right? Yep, anterior tibialis. These are underactive. Okay. So if those are underactive. Um, so when we have okay. an under... And it, it'll cause postural issues. I got it. Yep. So when you have an underactive muscle, we want to strengthen them with a 4 2 one, one tempo. Okay. One, one tempo. If you want to strengthen an underactive muscle. Yep. Four, and then two, what are you one, foam rolling the overactive or the underactive muscle for 20 to 40 seconds? Overactive. You foam roll the overactive muscle mm -hmm. and then you strengthen the underactive muscle. Yep. So this, these two right here, I'm going to foam roll for 20 to 40 seconds. And then the anterior tib, posterior tib, I'm going to strengthen at a four, two, one, one tempo. Strengthen at a four, two, one, one tempo. Yep. So what you'll see is <clears throat> your client has nevalgus. Which of the following are overactive? And then gas truck would be one, your anterior tib, your VMO, and then your uh, uh, glutes. Those would be the choices that you have. And they'll spell out the word. <clears throat> Should and I write this you... down? No, you don't need to. I'll send this video to you so you can have access to it. Uh, gas truck. All right, so then when we look at this chart here, memorizing that the overactive ones are always going to be these muscles. Mm -hmm. The underactive ones will always be these ones. So like I, like I said, I had the, um, the um, flashcards with this mm -hmm. information, right? And I learned... Um, you know from each other so if i i i just really need to know where they're at on the body more okay. than anything right i guess then what i how i would do that is i would have the the flash card and so then you pull it out of a stack and it says anterior uh -huh. tibialis that's going to be right uh -huh. here yeah so the the gluteus maximus is going to be your butt muscle right here uh-huh uh-huh your latissimus dorsi is overactive and that's your back muscle. Yeah. Your, whoops, your pectoralis major is your chest muscle. That's overactive. Yeah. Your upper trapezius is overactive. Mm -hmm. Your middle and lower trapezius right here, uh -huh. underactive. Below the traps, you have the rhomboid, major and minor. Those are underactive. Okay, so the rhomboid is below the major tra the traps? Yep, rhomboid, major and minor, underneath the middle and lower trapezes. <clears throat> okay. When you look at the hip musculature, the glutes on the posterior side, they're underactive. The psoas major is a hip flexor. That's right in here. Mm -hmm. That's overactive. So psoas major is a hip flexor. Okay. Your VMO, that word vastus medialis oblique, is this muscle right here. It's underactive. It's like what guys in the gym will call your teardrop. Yeah. Okay. Your adductor muscles are your thigh muscles. Your adductor your adductors group. are the inside of the thighs? Yep. And that's yep. adducting, and then ab abductor is on the outside of the thigh? Yep, and they bring you out. So adduct is on the inside of the thigh. Yep, so think of like adding to the midline. Got it. Okay. 
And those and are so those overactive or underactive? The uh, ductors are overactive. And so your ductors will be. Is that in there? Yep, right at the top one. Okay. So then the hamstring complex is going to be overactive. That's just your muscles behind your knee and the hamstrings. Like when you do a leg curl, those are overactive. Yeah. Your tensor fascia lata, that is a hip muscle on the outside right here. And it comes down to your knee. So your TFL is on the outside of your hip and it comes down to your knee. And so the, the five that we really need to know are overactive, the gastrocnemius, that's the calf muscle, the adductors, that's the thigh muscle, your psoas major, which is your hip flexor, your latissimus dorsi, and then your upper trapezius. Those are the main overactive ones. Now the main underactive okay. ones are gonna be the anterior tib. Your vastus medialis oblique, so your VMO. Your gluteus maximus. Your transverse abdominis, I'll show you that one here in a second. That's just the abs, right? Yep, it's underneath your abdominals. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's underneath the abs. Yeah. So it's not the it's not that whole ab part. No. So if you look right here, you'll you'll see the like this little dissection. Uh -huh. So you see how there's an ex, external oblique, internal oblique, and then there's the transverse abdominus is really deep, the deep muscle. Got it. Was that the last underactive muscle, major underactive muscle? Was it transverse abdominus or did I cut you off? Nope. And then you have what you have up here is called the deep cervical flexors through underneath your big neck muscle right here. So this is actually, I have this chart in my room. A lot of people will get this one. This is, this is a pretty good chart. So you can see where your psoas major is at the head flexor muscle. It's right here, but it's it's right here. So it's a, and you like in this, in this position, if we lift our leg up, that's called hip flexion. That's uh -huh. working that muscle. Yeah. So this is also a nice little image. You can see the quads here. So on the outside, you have the vastus lateralis. That's an overactive one. Vastus medialis is underactive. And so what I would do with those flashcards is I would literally just, I would just write on. So vastus medialis on the other side, I would put underactive. And then I would put in parentheses underneath underactive, I would say uh, medial quad muscle. And so then when you're flashcarding them, so like if this would be a flashcard, one side would say VMO, other side would say underactive, and then I'll put in parentheses medial quad. So medial means on the inside. <clears throat> it's my most recent blog that I did, just posted it today. And so I have everything on the OBT model, all right? So this is going to give you an example of the exercises from the textbook. And then it's going to tell you what you, what you need to know within that phase. So the first one, phase one, called stabilization. This is what you need to memorize right here. So 12 to 20 reps, one to three sets, four, two, one, one, intensity 50 to 70. And so I would flashcard those. I would have a card that says stabilization. And on the other side, I would have everything on this line. And then you have, you know, you get to work five minutes early, go through those flashcards. If you have a break, go through the flashcards and just really mm -hmm. hammer down the, they're, they're called the acute variables, acute variables. And you'll, you'll see a lot on this stuff. And how you're going to see it is the exam is going to say, your client is performing a stability ball squat. What is the tempo for that exercise? And you'll see mm -hmm. two, zero, two, zero. You'll see four, two, one, one. And you'll see two other random ones. You just got to remember that mm -hmm. it's always four, two, one, one. 
stabilization. Then, yep. And the next question, they'll ask you something about overactive, underactive muscle. So your client's performing a squat and their feet turn out, which of the following muscles is overactive. So there we're looking for the gas chalk or the soleus. Those two are overactive calf muscles. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get another question right after that. And it's going to go into your client is a beginner, which of the following would be an appropriate core exercise for them. So that's why we need to know the names of those exercises. So prone ISO ab is just a plank. Ball cobra. What part of the study? What, is this your study guide? This is a, a blog that I just put up. This is oh, all in the, the blog you just did. Yeah. So this is all in the, the study guide though. Mm-hmm. And so all of this, I would, when it comes to the study guide, I'll pull that up in heart anatomy, which they could definitely ask you some questions on. So your upper chambers are called your atriums. Yep. You know the, you know the names of the bottom ones? Uh, ventricles. Good. And then what is the pacemaker of the heart? The, um, uh, I, I know it's, it's in the right atrium. I don't know what it's called, though. It's called your SA node. SA node? SA node, yep. Some good vocab words to know are your GTO, which is your gold G. Gold G tendon organ. Yep. And so when you foam roll, you are holding on a sensitive area, which is applying, so think of the T for tension. So you apply tension mm -hmm. to that area and then via what's called autogenic inhibition, you are relaxing that same muscle. So if you recall from earlier, there's the lower body muscle that is overactive and it's your gastrocnemius. So what I would do, gastroc, I would foam roll the gastroc, which is your posterior calf muscle for 30 seconds. And, and by that's doing the underactive that, muscle or that's the overactive muscle? That's the overactive muscle. Okay. Overactive. And so then what you're going to do is you hold that for 30 seconds. And then via autogenic inhibition, that muscle is going to relax. So that's mm -hmm. the whole premise behind foam rolling and stretching. Yeah. Now, so think of Golgi tendon as foam rolling, whereas your muscle spindle, think of that as stretching. So when you do a, keep your hands on the wall and you do a calf stretch, you hold that for 30 seconds, you are inhibiting the muscle spindles. And then you have some, you will see one question. I always like to do the called your TA and Tanaka formula. Yeah, I don't memorize it, but when I see it on um, multiple choice, I, I I I know what it looks like. Good. So you just need to know it's two hundred eight. That's all you need to know. Two hundred eight times point seven, right? Something like yep. that. So just I mean, literally, it's just if you see which one of the Tanaka, let's just look for two hundred eight. That's all I need to look for. The other one is two twenty, and that's the um, heart rate reserve method. Uh, we don't have much on nutrition, but if we were to look at some basics with nutrition, we should know carbs, fats, and protein. So the main things that we need to know are the percentages, so forty-five to sixty-five percent. That's the it's called the DRI. Daily recommended intake. The fats, it's 20 to 35. Don't have more than 10% coming from saturated. And then protein is 10 to 35%. Okay. And then we have calories per gram. So how, if I would have one gram of carbohydrates, how many calories is that? One gram of carbohydrates is four, four calories, five calories. Good. Four. How about for fat? Nine. Good. And then for protein? Four. Good. Alcohol is technically a macronutrient, 
because it brings out seven cups.